again and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and if you're watching us on Facebook Live over there, thank you for watching. Um, so absolutely gorgeous weather. Uh, I mean, Knock on wood, I do think this is it. I, I mean... It feels like it. It yes. doesn't feel like we could have a big winter boom again. Honestly, if we had a huge nor'easter now, I'd be I quite don't, happy. Right. <laughs> like, we'd get a lot of snow, and it would be pretty for three days, and, and it'd, it'd be gone. gone. That's right. So. Um, yeah. It was really crazy last night. I was just... It was like almost 70, I think. It's just balmy. As long as the wind doesn't pick up. Yes. That's when it's cold. You're like, wait, but it's warm. The sun, yes, all of that. So it's it's wonderful. I mean, all it means is we're gonna have to start gardening soon. Yes, I was I already went, I looking was, at the leaves I outside was my property. Around the yard, and I was like, so Dan, I want to do this, and I want to do this, and I want to, you know. Oh, and another thing though is, I mean, the city is just really dirty right it now. It always is. Uh, yeah, so if you are, you know, back home, and if you care about Manchester and you care about the city, yeah. why don't you go out and just pick up the trash in front of your yeah, own property? Just in front, just take Whether care you're of your renting own. or whatever right we all want to live in a clean yeah. place so get yeah, out there there and, are no magical um, elves that are going to come along and clean every street in the city no I and mean. of course it's after the winter so it's stuff oh, that, that was under the yeah. snow it's you know just trash yeah. that falls off the trucks but it is gross out there right now so i'm gonna go do that yeah. this afternoon and if everyone did a little bit yeah. things would be a lot yeah. easier and a lot prettier and a lot better for all of us that's so. right See, look at us being all positive. Yes. Um, so I, well, this morning, I was like, geez, what do I want to talk to him? I mean, we could talk about the coronavirus, but, you know, everybody's tired of talking about the coronavirus, so let's not do that. Um, I mean, I, although, I, I will say... please do wash your hands. That's, like, the biggest thing. I don't know. Apparently, people didn't wash their hands. Wash your hands. I mean, it hands. is a little troubling, I have to say, that there's suddenly this wash your hands thing. So I was like, like... Do people not wash their hands? What's everyone been doing before? But then someone specifically said, I guess there was, like, some PSA or something that went out... And it was like, how, how to, to wash, wash your yeah, hands. Yeah, don't just do this. You know, and you gotta I, like actually get between your fingers and it takes so much. Well, I mean. I mean, I will say this. The premier of China is going to Wuhan today. I yeah. think that's a probably good indication yeah. that we are past the danger zone. I yeah. feel like. Um, I think there's just a lot of unknown. I think it's just. There's no specific answer to a lot of questions. You I don't mean, know. The, we don't know how. Here's the question I would like answered. As compared to the coronavirus, how many people have died of just flu. regular influenza? Yeah. And how scared are you of that? Right. Because that number is actually higher right. than this number. Right. But, you know, the the media and the powers that be aren't trying to scare I do you think, about I that. I do think that's the thing. It's um, I do think this is a serious virus because it's new and when... You know, basically nobody has an automatic immunity to it. I did read a very interesting article, or at least I read the first part until I got really bored, um, about whether working on a vaccine for this particular virus is the solution or whether um, we should be focusing on things that boost people's immune immune system. And I was like, wow, that's a totally amazing thought that I had never done. Like, instead of just finding a vaccine that Cure. stops this, shouldn't we be putting all our scientific studies into how do we make us stronger people? Yes, we absolutely should. Right? And in fact, I just had this conversation with my husband this morning and I was like, wouldn't that be cool if people, yeah. um, you know, instead of worrying about this. everything, but also just worrying about everything in the world. Mm. How about this? How about everyone just start worrying about you? Right. If you're not healthy, Get figure healthy. it out. Right. Uh, you know, if your immune system is compromised, there are things that you can do. There are better and worse ways to eat. We all know sleep yeah. is good for yeah. us. We all know, like, we all know what the recipe is, yeah. and then no one follows it, and then everyone's like, boo hoo hoo, I have mental health issues, and I'm fat, and I'm unhealthy, and I'm like, so do something about it. I saw you had shared um, <laughs> Will Smith, it was it Will Smith? Yeah. An inspirational thing about, you know, People say to Will Smith, the actor, well, I, I always wanted to be an actor. And he's like, okay, well, you have to actually be disciplined and do it. It doesn't just happen. You have to do I mean, the I, things. I think part of, you know, this this uh, seeding of our sense of self-ownership and self-determination mm -hmm. to the nanny state uh, creates a sort of dependency mentality mm -hmm. that Rather is... Rather than self-sufficiency. Unhealthy, And so, you know, I think it's wonderful that the world is actually rich enough where people can go, I am going to worry about yeah. all these other things, yeah. you know. 
But let's worry less about that because if every single person on earth just worried about themselves first, yeah. then when you have the, the multitude of riches to be able to say, well, now I have the opportunity to worry about well, this else. and that and the other, right? But the, but the point is, start with yourself. Yeah. You know, I, I've been doing a lot of talks and stuff um, actually all over the country and internationally. And, you know, the crux of the talk is you can't fake skills. Right. So Not you can't you can fake it till you make it, but you can't you actually skill. fake skills. And beyond that is you can't fake health. Right. So when these people talk about, you know, and, and, and I feel like I can say this because I've been on a whole range of, of, right. of you know, lifestyle choices. Yeah. But, you know, you can't fake health, which means that, you know, with body positivity and all these things, that's awesome. But you know what? If you're not healthy, you're right. you're not helping. It doesn't help you're worried about global warming if, if you're, you're not taking care of yourself. Because it starts within and we can actually control a lot of of things independently as human beings mm -hmm. if we actually take that approach. So if everyone takes the approach from it starts within you yep. and light that fire to be the best you you can be. Yep. Forget about everyone else. Focus on you and if you focus on you it's going to have this knock-on effect um, that, you know, will stop things like coronavirus because your immune system That's will right. be strong enough. So see, we did talk there about There you have it. <laughs> um, so I tried to think, I'm like, what can we talk about? It is spring. This did bubble up into my brain yesterday. Um, I've done that. I think every year I've probably touched on this subject matter. So I'm a dog owner. Mm -hmm. I have Jenny, the rescue dog. You're a dog owner. You have Nervous Nelly, the rescue dog. Yes. Um, we both have very like skittish, crazy <laughs> dogs. They're wonderful dogs, but they both are a little timid in their own way. She's a th th Nelly. Sir, I mean, Nervous Nelly. She's yeah. certainly special. <laughs> Jenny is definitely special. Um, so Dan and I took Jenny at lunchtime yesterday on a big long walk, and it made me stop and think about, okay, maybe it's time to remind people the common sense things. If you're a dog owner, or if you're not a dog owner, what not to. Like, I think people have misconceptions about what dog owners do. Um, I did see um, the dog poop, I don't get why people do this. They put the dog poop in the bag and then leave it on the sidewalk. I don't, I, it, it perplexed me yesterday. I was like. Sometimes like we'll do that. Like my dog likes to and pick it up. Right. But, so I assume that's someone who's doing right. that who then just forgot when they came Maybe. back. Maybe, that could be. So, you know, so uh, there could be that. I'm also, so I'm in the school. What, what, where do you fall on this? So for a long time, this troubled me. Is I was like, okay, if my, yes, this is a show about poop, We're going to talk about dogs <laughs> and poop. So, so if my dog poops and she poops next to someone else who hasn't picked up their dog poop, do Dan's you pick it? I don't pick up the poop. Dan I don't up pick poop. up other people's dog's poop, but it bothers me every time because I kind of feel like, feel well, like I'm kind of here right now, but then I just, Dan I. Dan probably picks up the, because Dan picks up all the poop everywhere. He goes to the dog park, picks up the poop. He's just very, you know, he's Dan. It's, I wouldn't, I don't know. I hate picking up the poop. I purposely. So, well, well, and so a, a couple of things. So I know uh, people who come from different countries yes. find it astounding that we pick up the poop, that we pick up the poop yeah, right? Yeah. So I think that, you know, kudos to people because who wants to be walking on poop? But here's my question. Like if my dog poops next to the trail in the plants. In the woods. Yeah, oh, and, and sometimes it's not even like clearly in the woods. But it's it's just like trail. if you're on the rail trail and right. there are plants here and she goes into the bushes, right? Are you supposed to go digging in the bush for the poop? I, mean, I think that's a little much personally. So, so I feel like there's a green argument there where it's like right. it's actually worse for the environment if to use a plastic bag to pick up the poop that now you're putting the poop in the plastic bag. That's never that's going never gonna right. go away. So I, you know, and so I've typically, if it's clearly like someplace no one's gonna right. step in it right um i like to leave it right but i've had people but just, just <laughs> yell at me sometimes people just yell at you because your dog's say, peeing right you're like i'm sorry my you, uh, property owners who think that dog owners can somehow control when their dog pees and poops are irrational to me yeah and, and people uh, and people real really <laughs> 
Dogs have been peeing and pooping on your front lawn forever. As long as I'm picking up the poop, please don't scream at me. Um, and there are, you know, I, we can debate whether we need to have government step in and things, but people are stupid and it probably, you know, this is what causes stupid regulation because too many people don't pick up after See, but the, No, what causes stupid regulation is when we seed our inherent right. rights to the government. See, because all of this stuff, can be done on a community level it can be. and if you argue that it can't be done on a community level then it's certainly not something that should be forced upon us by the government because like if you can't make your neighbors do something of Why? their own free will right. then it is more wrong to be like well now we're gonna say you must do it i mean so for those no. of you worried about what the government what the 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 <laughs> animal control people are gonna do they're there's a couple um, ordinances. These are not laws. They do, I think, um, one is, this is part of law, but it's also listed in our ordinances. Um, you can't let your dog run at large. And I, this- But you can let it run at small. At, <laughs> um, at large would be, and it's funny because when, I would never let Jenny loose, because she'd be gone. Um, but I see people sometimes walking, they're much more, burly dog let's go with that on the street without a leash and i do work I, it does cause me you know I, a little bit of angst because i'm thinking you know animals are animals dogs are dogs they don't they you know the best behaved dog can react poorly um just because they're they're an animal um so so yes your dog might be able to walk next to you but is it going to take off and chase my dog that's now on a leash? I, I, there's a, and you know, not everybody likes dogs, and I get it. Um, but then on the walking path, I mean, we always walked with Daisy, and Daisy, his brain was this big, so we didn't really <laughs> have to worry about it. But she was good off leash; she didn't go anywhere. Right. Um, but technically, you're not supposed to have. Oh, excuse me, your dog off leash on the street or in the public. You can have your dog in your car without a leash. That is, it, I laugh that it actually does spell that out, that you don't have your, have your dog on a leash while in your car. <laughs> um, uh. You're supposed, you, you not only have to pick up after your dog, you have to have bags with bags you. With you. <laughs> so even if your dog doesn't poop, technically you're breaking the rules if you don't have a bag, even if your dog just pooped in the yard at home and you know the dog's... At, so, you know, and you can't let, um, and this isn't just dogs, uh, they can't bark forever. And, which, you know, to, okay. Which is considerate. That's yeah. part of the RSA. Um, dogs, they're considered a, a nuisance if the dog is barking for sustained periods of more than a half an hour or during the night. Can, can I also just say to folks back home, if you're one of these people who your dog barks because, Everything. you know, we live in a city mm. and so someone else walks by with a dog. You know what's almost worse than the dog barking? The neighbor who's like, Yelling. shut up right. at their dog for like five minutes where yeah. I'm like, well, you just, just took an annoyance <laughs> to a whole we other level. Yes. <laughs> so well, maybe not. Right. You know. Right. I don't want to hear. It's that is a very good point. I don't want to hear somebody being as loud as a barking dog either. Yeah. I mean, you it's know. just. I find it comical when I walk. I I prefer not to walk. You know, in the neighborhood. Yeah. Just. I mean, I do once or twice a week. Uh, but you know, like I like going on trails yeah, on and getting what they call in in Japan the forest bath. <laughs> forest bathing, you know, where you're just in nature and yeah. you're processing and the birdies and all the good stuff. But yeah, there's, you know, I've got a couple of neighbors. Now that you say it, that is kind of funny because it's true. And I did, I was happy to hear because Jenny barks, she has a distinct, she is loud and it's, it's, a, it's distinct and um, almost like a hound bark, oh, wow. which is, you know, takes a minute off my life every time she barks. <laughs> um, but I was glad to hear that when I was outside one day and she's because she's going to bark at the mailman every day, every Amazon delivery, she's going to bark <laughs> like crazy. Um, if there's some person walking by our house, she barks. Um, but I was with the door in the winter outside. You can't hear her because right. I thought for sure you have to be able to hear this and you can barely hear. her. Um, I'm sure in the spring, you know, she's just going to bark. She's a dog. Um, but. I, I read online sometimes where people are like, well, call the police. Well, I'm not sure what you think, one, that you think that's a big enough priority for the police. I would rather see them responding to um, actual crimes with victims, you know, thefts, property damage, 
injury, things like that, than if your neighbor's dog is barking. Um, there is a division in this police, the animal control division, and their job is, you know, to deal with the complaints and whatnot. I and here's a, here's a question, I guess, also, is... So the dog's barking and someone thinks the appropriate response is to call the police. I mean, besides the fact that that seems like a extreme uh, reaction, reaction yeah. to, to any situation, why not just go over to you? Like, because what people do you don't want to talk to another human being anymore, I don't think. Well, well, but that's problematic. And then also, like, what, what, what do you magically think the, the police, police are, are do going to do them. other than actually just go Moving over there and, say, and hey, hopefully the just go over there and just talk to someone, right? So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's guys, it's a, it's a mental state. Like, you right. can either have a mental right. state of well, everyone else needs to fix yeah. my problems yeah. Or you can have a mental state of, well, I will fix and my problem. people don't have to be jerks about everything. So, like, let's use the scenario. You've got a neighbor whose dog is barking and barking and barking and barking. So don't go over there and swear at your neighbor and tell him his dog sucks or whatever. I mean, you could, but that's probably not going to get you any resolve. Right. But if you go over and knock on your neighbor's door and say, I don't know if you realize that your dog's been barking for the last 45 minutes and I can't hear my television in my house because your dog's been barking for 45 minutes. I just didn't know if you knew that it impacted me as, a, as your neighbor. Right. And why I just want to be a good neighbor and, you know, maybe we can figure something out. People are very negatively reactive. Um, I was joking this morning because there was a conversation about Twitter and candidates and whether and I thought you know what my get my suggestion to anybody running for office I think is is just don't do Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is really negative. People just lash I mean, out and scream at each other it's, on Twitter. It's never been my f my no. my forum. I mean, I do Facebook. I I actually think I would be good on Twitter because I like to yeah. condense things into the sort of bumper sound, stickers. But, yeah. but for me, it, like I did an assessment and I was like, I only like, have X amount of time. And if you just want to get sucked into time loss, where like you're scoring points <laughs> with people you'll never see, never meet, who who really just just actually within like your your real world right because we're also in this like weird space where we've created like this virtual reality yeah. and right? then our real reality and then our real realities which you know and and the twain can meet yeah but it's just like you know maybe spend more maybe time spend in the real more world time yeah, I kind of call, like I was joking, because, you know, I'll be running uh, against mm. uh, Senator Lou D'Alessandro again. And, um, you know, and I was just thinking that, you know, it's it's about the real world. Yep. It's about, you know, what's 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 really happening, yep. not this yep. sort of um, fake other world. So on the dog note, yes. so I did go out. So there's a couple things you can do if you're a dog owner. Um, Maybe you're not aware. Maybe you're new to Manchester. So Manchester does have a dog park. I know this because I <laughs> built it with my friends. Um, Private, with, right? Privately. Yep. It's a private dog park. It is on city property um, because the city's not responsible. The city doesn't maintain it. The dog park and its members and its donors maintain it. They do not use tax dollars, which is wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. Um, it is a membership-based dog park. It's 10,000 square feet. It, you know, people complain that there's no grass or there's not all these things. And I think, well, what did you really expect a dog park to be? This is not a human park. This is a dog park. The dogs run. Right. That's all they do. They don't yep. care. And and you can't maintain. Um, you can't. I mean, I was you'd surprised. You'd have to mow grass if it was dirt. Yeah. You'd have mud. There's like, there's no good. People don't think it through. There's a reason why it's sand. Right. Because it's the only surface that can work for dogs that you can pick up poop and they can right. pee in and whatnot yeah. and they don't dig in. Um, but it's $20. They do, dig in. They do but <laughs> if, if you're a good dog owner, you fill in your dog's hold. Um, it's $20 for the first dog, $10 for every additional dog. You can get information about how to join or um, any information about the dog park and how it got started or whatnot at manchesternhdogpark.org. Um, also, the Manchester Animal Shelter, you know, if you're like, if whether you're own, a pet owner or you're somebody who just wants to help the community, um, they do a lot of really great things. They have a, like a low cost spay and neuter program for low income families. So because, you know, people on the lower end of the economics still have pets. And if we all spay and neuter our pets, we don't have kittens everywhere and puppies everywhere. Um, 
They are located up on Dunbarton Road, 490 Dunbarton Road, so almost to the drop-off facility. Um, I'll be going there for the plant well, sale later. Well, I was going to say, I looked <laughs> at their um, events because I knew they did a bunch of different events. So the first one is on March 19th, which is just next week. Oh, wow. Which if you go to um, Dairy Queen, which is over on our neck of the woods, over on 2nd Street, um, you can get a free ice cream. And any donations from there will support the Manchester Animal Shelter. Okay, oh, that was fun. So that's on um, March 19th from 11 in the morning till 9 at night. So that was fun. Free ice cream, help the animals. <laughs> right? What could be better, um, folks? Then in May, on May 2nd, they have um, Comcast Cares Day, which um, Comcast, I think their volunteers and their staff come and do repairs on the animal shelter. Which I was unaware of. Oh, that's really nice. Right? And um, then the big one, which is very important to Carl and I, not only because it benefits the animal shelter, because it's plants. Um, June 7th, from 9 to 1, okay. their 14th annual plant and raffle sale, or plant sale and raffle. Um, great place to go and oh, get yeah. plants for your yard. I went reasonable. for the first time last year. It like, is you a know, really I mean, good... we only been homeowners right. for a few years, so it's... Well, you know, now it's you'll have a specific new. list. Now you'll walk. Oh, I have, And yes. it's, it's a busy, busy thing, but you can pick up plants significantly less expensive than you would pay yeah. in the store and they came out of people's yards so you know they're, so they're grow acclimatized well. for right. the for the um, area and so um, that's coming up which is awesome um so you can get more information about any of these events or they have a wish list of items that they're always looking for at the shelter because they take care of you know d d animals that are maybe uh, i'll donate some of my lily i have a i have a li lily problem at my yeah, house those little so white lilies little everywhere white ones, just yeah. pot them up i probably have pots i mean i could probably donate yep, some yep. for one yep. of these uh, yeah. you get all sorts of information that. at manchesteranimalshelter.org so those are easy websites to remember um i also wanted to talk quickly about things that are normal and coming up um this saturday is the free second saturday at the courier um i gotta go and make i have to join i keep saying it and i just oh, have it's it. worth being I, a member i say i is. have to join dan has to join um it's only 50 dollars <laughs> for an individual or 80 dollars for a household so that's crazy cheap um this week also happens to be member appreciation week in case you didn't know so there's extra discounts for um members at the Courier Museum of Art. Um, but this Saturday, if you get there between 10 and noon and you're a New Hampshire resident, you get in for free. Um, you can get more information about the Courier and the wonderful um, programs they have there at Courier, C-U-R-R-I-E-R.org. Um, and I wanted to let people know when the St. Patrick's Parade is. I forced myself to not call it the St. Patrick's Day Parade because it's not. Um, it is the St. Patrick's Parade because it's never going to be on St. Patrick's Day because oh, okay. they cannot attract bands. It, it makes sense. So it isn't the St. Patrick's Day Parade. It's the St. Patrick's Parade. Um, it's <laughs> Sunday, March 29th, so it's significantly later this year. Okay. Um, which is probably good because that means it'll be warmer. I guess, um, it yeah. takes place 25th year, which I'm amazed because I remember when they... That just doesn't seem possible. I remember when they brought back the parade because we didn't have it for years, and then they brought it back. And I have a hard time believing that that, that could be 25 years ago because it seems like it should have been maybe 10. Um, wow, but yeah. it runs from 11 to 3 down Elm Street. Um, all the restaurants, you know, always have specials and Shashkeen because they're an Irish pub will have things and Murphy's will have things and things like that. Um, but those are the March, you know, the March Madness in Manchester type things. Okay. Um, if you get out... There's tons of places to walk. I mean, some of them will still be muddy. The trail, you do the trail all the I time. I mean, honestly, I actually went over, you know, I like to go on the west side and then go down the Piscataway River. You can go yeah. on the other side where, um, you know, I'm not saying are. anyone takes their dogs off leash there. Yeah, but, but people you know. do. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, and I actually went down there last week. when it bad? Like, and And, I mean, I didn't have quite the right shoes yeah. on. So well, it, was it was a still, little muddy yeah. and there was still a bit of snow. But it was it was it was Yeah, because you can, if you get, go on fun. the trail, the bike path, whatever it's called, the big The path, rail trail. The rail yeah. trail that goes from Goffstown down to the um, Snoo Arena, uh, the Fisher Cats Arena, whatever yeah. that is called. Uh, Delta Delta Dental stadium um if you go where the ice arena is there is a trailhead there that brings you through the woods which is a really nice little walk over a very nice bridge which yep. is I, I think that came from army corps of engineers when they had to rebuild because of the floods that happened oh, wow. a okay. while back and then it connects you to the soccer fields over off of um head street and Precourt right. street so it's really kind of nice because you get to really be in the woods it's yeah um, it's, i mean you you can't believe you're in this no. i can't believe i'm less than and five i'm looking forward to um getting awesome. out 
um, up to the Rhododendron Trail or whatever it is up in Ward 12. Oh, There's a yeah, there. we should go up there together okay. some weekend or some day or whatever. Um, technically, they don't allow dogs, but I break the rules and bring my dog. I don't understand why is that? that? Why is that like that is... as long as you're picking up after your dog, you like. I mean, isn't it all the state parks in New Hampshire well, don't like all their photos of our people, have people with, with dogs, dogs but, most but you're not allowed yeah. to take your dog. I mean, I've run into that several places. I love to explore. Yep. And, and New Hampshire is so rich in terms of its culture, parks, yep. like cute little random weird yeah. museums. Yep. You know, like we there's a Stonehenge here. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, I, I stopped there once and they were like, no dogs allowed. And, and I was like, like well, I guess I'm leaving right. them because why can't I and just... Especially you know. now, I mean, you know why? Because there's right. some jerky lady somewhere who complained once, <laughs> and now everyone must suffer. So if you're that person, person, please don't, don't do it either. Like the whole world cannot be according to your little control freak. Well, you know, I, wishes. I know we don't have much time to really talk about it. It's one of those things we I, we've talked about on the show before. There's, um, I, I looked, I didn't see any current legislation, but trust me, if I get elected, I'm going to pursue this. Um, Restaurant owners should be able to decide for themselves if they want to allow dogs on their patio. Outdoor of the restaurant. Yes. I'm sorry. In this, you know how many people... Do you know, like, in, in, in Maine, there's this little uh, Shaughnessy Creek uh, uh, lobster shack, okay. right? And it's on the river. And I've loved going there for years. I always take people because... It's they, just that place. It's it's just that place. They're super cool. You're allowed to bring your own booze if you drink. Yep. You're actually allowed to bring your own sides. And their only request is, if we're busy, don't spend more than two hours there. Right. So don't people bring large space. groups and they hang out together. So someone there like complained about someone who had a dog and now they've banned dogs. They had dogs there for 25 yep. Yep. years. I mean, so please don't be that no. person. And you know what? The government doesn't need to tell a, a private own, restaurant owner that they can't allow somebody to sit at a table and drink a beer outside with their dog on so, the table. If we want to solve the world's so. problems, let's start respecting property rights again. What's mine yep. is mine. What's yours is yours. Yep. And if I own the property, meaning I own the restaurant, you don't get to tell the property owner what they can do with their property. That's right. Basta. So there. So there. So get out. <laughs> enjoy the spring. Um, I looked at the 10-day forecast. It doesn't look like it's getting cold. So fingers crossed. I'm hoping this is it. And I'm hoping by the 1st of April, we're doing yard work. Yep. So there. That'll be April Fool's. <laughs> Anyways, that's all we got this week. Thanks, guys. See you next week.